So then back to the slides, I mean, so we're upwinding. So those convective terms enter in through these relative permeabilities. So we want to upwind those. And the upwinding, we have to do a check, because you know, in my one-dimensional example, my wave was only propagating one way. But you know, if I had a boundary there, it would have turned around and propagated the other way. And so when we, if, if, the, if the field or the velocity could be moving in either direction, then we have to check to see which direction it's moving in. Right? So in the case of Darcy flow, we know that the field or the flow is going to be from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So if, the, if, if this is higher than that, then the velocity vector is going to be pointing in such a way that this, the, the I minus 1 will be the behind the velocity vector. Right? So this is a, a check we have to do for the upwinding scheme. So I think you went over this, but uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. This is when you have the wells. I mean, you, you had a question there about the, the, uh, the J prime. I, I, I'll double check with Dr. Bellhoff on that, but I think it's just uh, the productivity indices of each phase. Okay, but I'll, I'll double check and get you an answer on that. I'll send you an email if it's not, not what I said. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this derivation, he's just assuming from the beginning that there's both in each well, right? So, so that you get these terms that show up uh, for the cube. But of course, if there's not really a bottom hole pressure well, then the flow rate at the well, I mean, then, then that's not zero, and that, so that whole term goes away, right? So, you, oh, and same, same way here, if there's not really a, a, a producer or an injector, uh, then you just zero those out and those terms go away. Right? I also have a question about uh, saturation filtering. Mm -hmm. Usually you use like into the water and like it just goes into the mm -hmm. So on the on the cube plane, what cool injector is it? Is it the same thing as like the water filter that we use? Um, no, there's there's one for each. There's one for water and one for oil. Of course you're not you have to watch the signs. I mean, it, you never actually inject oil, right? You're, there's a flow rate for water and a flow rate for oil, right? I know they say cube injectors inject 10,000 liters of oil. And so I was wondering, if we use the cube plane. Oh, so in the problem statement, it doesn't say if it's water or oil? Cube injector, you need one bottle, bottle, once a bottle. Of yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, if, you're, if it says it's an injector, you're injecting water. Yes, possibly, yeah. Yeah, so the, there's also, just in words, the saturation, right, we, we, we already sort of talked about this. This is the implicit, uh, you know, now including a, a potential bottom hole pressure wells, the implicit pressure computation, the explicit saturation equation, and so in words, this would be like the new saturation is the old saturation plus the change in saturation plus any accumulation due to compressibility. But the compressibility of water, we're going to say, is small so that this term goes away. So you don't need to carry it with you. So those are just the definitions of the productivity indices. This is exactly what we had before, except you have this extra mobility ratio term from the relative permeabilities and, and other things, that just the subscripts right now. And yeah, the last sort of key thing is that you have this uh, CFL condition. So let's look at an example. Um, so here's an example, and this is uh, this is the Buckley lever problem essentially. So you have 
an injected flow and a produced flow constant, homogeneous, initial 